I've always had this question as an artist and designer. Why make? It has been hard to follow up that with the proper answer, other than I love it and can't live without it. I've always had the idea of not adding extra waste into the world, reusing, upcycling, hand making the items, especially with textiles. But I love designing with fabric. This project started off as an exploration into anti-industrialization and traditional making, but transformed into something much more sentimental and current to what I am particularly interested in. And it's very interesting how that is reflected in what currently is growing in Vancouver. Regarding the diversity of representation in this video, it's still in progress for finding local designers to showcase and for students, no one volunteered in time. Glasnost workshop. Glasnost's unisex and size inclusive rainwares feature minimalist clean lines with a utilitarian sensibility. Known for waterproof wax, cotton, and linen jackets and accessories. I asked a series of it has an questions. online and in-person studio, mainly run by one person. Stephanie Schneider. Who are you? I'm Stephanie Schneider. I don't have formal training in design or fashion, but I was interested in ecological topics. It led me to pursue clothing design. I'm also a mom. What are your values or goals? To make locally, made to order, slow fashion, can return to the earth, and non-permanence. What does design mean to you? Non-mass production, responsible and functional. What are your inspirations? There was Moto, a clothing studio that was inspiring and shared a studio space with us, but is no longer in business. I'm a little bit behind today. I don't have as much uh, time as I thought. My parents came to pick up my kids to take them away for the week. And I thought that they'd be gone early. <laughs> but I only just got here. Oh, uh, yeah. So this coat that I'm working on right now is a custom order for somebody. So they take their measurements. Um, we usually do a FaceTime fitting, so I help them with their measurements. And then uh, I make them a custom coat. And I can ship it off to them, because it can be so hard to sort out measuring yourself on your own. So it's nice doing it over FaceTime. Explain the branding and name. Glasnost in Russian means openness and the branding is just clean and natural. How did you start your practice? I was interested in constructing and deconstructing clothes young and then took it up while needing basic necessities like a rain jacket in Vancouver. I took ecological courses and thought about plastic waste in textiles and took five pattern drafting classes at VCC. What is your design process? Needing an item, patterning it, and planning it out. Most things are made to order. How do you source material? Wholesale natural fibers, cotton and linen. I tried dead stock in the past, but I ran out of consistent material. Why waxed clothes? I didn't like the oversaturation of technical wear and plastic shell jackets in Vancouver. It rains all the time, and I don't want to look like I came from a sporting event. Plus, it's not very eco-friendly. I usually do hot stamping for my labels, so I can show you how I okay. do one of those. I just have to wait for my iron to heat up. How do you price? All my yearly expenses divided by 12 to live monthly with a profit goal. What types of services do you do? 
made to order, a sustainable model for no overstock and waste materials. It's more sentimental to users. People thought the model was bad a few years ago, but now it's a popular system for sustainable businesses. Why Vancouver? My family, children, and house all in Vancouver. Plus, there's a sustainable goods market here for made-to-order fashion in the community. How is your online presence? I have a site and an Instagram, but I'm mainly still transitioning from getting a lot of traction from the pandemic. How is your work culture? I work every day alone, but I have a studio. I prefer to have freedom to take breaks to be with my family. If it grows more, I will need more employees as I've hired contract sewers before. And I got a tour of the studio. So this is my studio. I've had it for about a year. I just moved in, um, but I love it. Um, I love it because it has so much natural light for working. Uh, I have this really nice big table, which is useful because it holds a ton of fabric and all my patterns. Um, over here is where I keep all of my patterns that I make. They're basically blocks that I make adjustments to for each customer because everybody does custom sizing. Um, and over here is where I do a lot of the leather work and uh, all my coats have snaps, so I set all my snaps here on my bench. have a collection of sewing machines that seems like a lot of them but it seems like you need another machine for every job <laughs> um over here's my studio assistant who's always working very hard <laughs> and here's some of the things that i make i make wax cotton raincoats so I made completely out of wax cotton and all the finishings on the inside are quite nice. So I make these in, I think there's nine different sizes in the plain trench coat so that it is size inclusive for everybody. And then they're gender neutral too so I can adjust in the fitting to suit different body shapes if people are, you know, bigger shoulders, bigger hips. I can accommodate anything. Um, and so for the most part, I mostly make this trench coat, but I do have some other styles. This was the first coat that I ever made. It was called my parachute, and it's a big kind of bat wing, open sleeve, fun for the rain. That's what started this whole project. So now I make vests and short coats that are lined in wool as well variety of things and then in the off season when it's not raining I usually do a bit of linen so I'm doing lots of linen wear again I do this sized custom sizing for people and I used to do a lot more accessories I don't have any new ones here but this was a bag that I made this is probably like seven years old but I still do this one as special request for people people want one I do a little bit of leather work but not as much anymore so I can cut them out stitch them in you have the hang tag there it looks beautiful <laughs> Yeah. It, what's nice about it is that it ages really nicely. The leather gets a nice patina over time. Most of the people in the last year that have come in to do custom fitting, I sell a lot of stuff online, but for the people who do come into studio, when they come to pick up their little their coat, I usually take a picture of them and add them to the wall my collection. It's helps cool. me remember all the coats that I make and that I send out. It's nice to have a little memory. I asked a series of interview questions to a classmate who volunteered. So, who are you? I am studying industrial design, but I would like... I'm someone who really enjoys working with nature, and that's something I would like to do afterwards is to be an environmental designer. 
<laughs> what are your values and goals? Uh, sustainability. I feel like that's a very common one. Um, non-permanence, non-disruption to the environment, but something that still represents yeah. making something that still represents individuality and customization. What does design mean to you? It's just making stuff that is both pretty and functional, pretty and useless, and oh, pretty and useful. <laughs> okay, so do you have any inspirations for creating? Uh, the West Coast, I'd say. Um, those like windswept trees or crashing waves. Yeah, pretty As much. we can see, right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very West Coast vibes. <laughs> Do you have your own practice or would you want your own practice in the future? I don't have my own practice, but I would like one. Um, probably won't happen anytime soon, but I would like to, on the side, kind of curate my own practice for landscape, architecture, sculpture type of thing. Um, so where is your favorite place to work in? Um, I guess probably just in my room alone, but like anywhere in the world, uh, Tofino. Okay, I was gonna ask like what materials do you use, but yeah. Right now a lot of dirt. <laughs> dirt and wood. Dirt and wood. Yeah. Do you think you're gonna have your practice still in Vancouver? Like if you do? I think so. I don't think it will go anywhere else in the next at least five or so years. Um, who knows by then. So probably in my 20s, if I do end up having my own practice, it'll be in the Lower Mainland, Vancouver area. How is your like online presence? Semi-non-existent. I only recently fully set up a LinkedIn page. Um, barely have anything on my Instagram. I, yeah, no, I don't have much of an online presence. I, I need to get one. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Future. It has an online and in-person studio, mainly run by one person also. Jamie Dawes. I'm working on a blouse right now for the rest of the day. Which has taken me months. Future makes custom and one-of-a-kind clothing from dead stock or reclaimed materials with a full size range from 24 to 42. Their clothes are made for everybody and every body. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out because I'm not doing the U top anymore, I'm not doing this top anymore. So I have all of these really cool woven fabrics that I want to use and I don't have a style for them right now. So I'm trying to figure out some sort of button up, long sleeve, sort of Victorian-esque blouse that I can utilize all those fabrics with, but it seems to be quite challenging doing things that are form fitting and tailored with long sleeves because in order to have it be so tight down here, you need it to be tight under the armpits as well, but then the sleeve's too tight. So it's like, and trying to have it be adjustable is what I'm trying to figure out right now. And everyone's arm sizes are completely different as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot, but I'll show you, this is, I'll show you my favorite fabrics. These are ones that I'm saving. So, Vivian Westwood-esque. It is, it's so Isn't it? So pretty. Like in a plaid skirt with like a matching, I don't know, top. And then I source a lot of materials like this, that you're like, what could this possibly be used for? And there's only that much of it. So 
one garment will be made, whether it's like, I don't know, a skirt or something. And those are always the most tedious projects, but the most fulfilling. So these are fabrics that I've been saving. And then just like a lace, I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? It's so cool. That is cool though, like. For like a skirt over pants or I know, something. like you did like a lace skirt some time ago too. I did, but I'm just, I'm not happy with um, the fit. I have to revisit it, but yeah, something like that. Something that I can just make a basic skirt. And then I always overthink, I'm like, oh, anyone can make a basic skirt. So it's like, I'm supposed to be a fashion designer you know, wanting to like push myself a little bit more and then I end up just not doing anything. I asked a series of interview questions. Who are you? My name is Jamie Dawes. I'm the owner and designer of a contemporary clothing line called Future, and I only use secondhand and did stock materials. What are your values or goals? Similar to you, when I graduated, I was searching for a place to work and I was really into sustainability. It was only being introduced in Kwanlin. I was searching for work in Vancouver, but there was only big companies hiring, which are great for experience, but I was not comfortable adding more waste. So I started my own thing. What does design mean to you? Being a fashion designer is not needed in this society, but I feel like it's what I'm meant to do. So trying to find a way to do my craft and have a good conscience is my goal. Also trying to make something from your customers while designing for yourself is also hard to balance. So this is all from um, another small brand that has gifted all of this fabric weight leather that has stretch to it. So hoping that this could be, you know, some sort of blouse in the end that's all patchwork together or something. This is a big goal of mine, this corner. <laughs> yeah. What are your inspirations? I'm trying to design for myself now what I would wear. It's a unique perspective. I used to design what would sell, but I don't think that's how a business should run. What is your design style? Contemporary, tailoring, Classic silhouettes with interesting design lines or one standout thing like cool fabric. I like showing off the female form even though it's not my personal style. This is my favorite corner because it's the only corner that I can kind of keep clean. And these are all my grandma's um, costume jewelry that she had. And my mom just recently gave them to me, but I think I'm gonna spray paint them all chrome. They're like little clip-on earrings. They're so cool. Those are cool. I'm gonna spray paint them chrome so I can use them in a shoot of some sort. And then my sewing room and sort of my, where I do like all my website stuff. Um, this room needs some love for sure, but I don't have the capacity to make anything really, really cute. Everything's just functional at the moment. So I only have two machines. I'm really hoping to get a cover stitch soon so I can start working with all of my knits. And then I have my whole fabric room which I love. Everything that I found at Value Village or um, there's a really great resource called Our Social Fabric. Um, and they just sell reclaimed and dead stock fabrics by like small amounts. So I get a lot of stuff there. Yeah, this is my favorite room that I try to keep a little as organized as possible. And then every couple of months I'll go through all of the fabric and sort of take out what I actually don't like and what I don't think I'll finally use. But we try to keep everything. Scraps. This is all like all my plaid scraps. I have so many goals of patchworking but patchworking seems to be incredibly tedious so it's it's much easier to work with just a 
flat piece of fabric, but I still save it all just in case. Explain the branding and name. Future is a phonetic way of saying future. It felt right when I saw it after a few other naming attempts. It's the morals of my brand. And also it was available online as a handle, which very much helps. How did you start your practice? I did work for an upcycling brand before and I designed for a couple of years. To see how small businesses run, it gave me so much confidence to do my own thing. You have to learn so much about business, so it's better to learn from someone else first for trial and error. What is your design process? It's different every time. Something triggers an idea, pattern drafting, and then it's completely changed after a few hours. Then prototyping 10 or more samples. It's not a quick process. How do you source material? I cold call textile manufacturers, thrift fabric, receive donated fabric. I'm working to get big rolls. Typically, you're supposed to design for the fabric, but then you have to unlearn that. I need to design a garment that works for all different types of fabrics. White clothes. It's what I gravitated towards as a kid. I was mainly into the making part instead of fashion. I fell in love with sewing and clothing was the next progression. I was always so proud of making what I wear. Which I'm really excited about. And then these gray pants are my new, my new pant that I was working on for so long, trying to figure out the stitching and everything. And it's just like edge stitching all into the, into the inseam there. And then it just like frames the butt so nicely. <laughs> so excited about those. They're I know, they look really cool. Coming out on Saturday. And then it gives me the opportunity to be like, I can do one fabric, one fabric, one fabric, like all of these panels can be different and I can utilize a lot of my small scraps. So they don't have to be so symmetrical even. I could do like stripes and plaid and then another plaid and another stripe and make them really cool. So that's a goal for those pants. I just wanted to come out with the classic colorway as like a staple. Similar to that dress that I can use just like all of my remnants into one garment. I love that look of things where it's modern. How do you price? It's difficult for small brands. Time is such a hard thing to calculate, especially for sourcing because it's unknown. Materials, what I pay myself, overhead, like studio costs, marketing, and then a general markup. 2.2 or 2.3. What types of services do you do? This year, I want to get into wholesale with cool local boutiques, which I can align with. So far, it's just custom garments off the site or stockists. Why Vancouver? Out of necessity, I was born and I went to school here. For work in fashion, I was thinking of moving, but now that I'm here, I am glad. There is a great community that supports small designers here. I would like in the future to expand to Tokyo or New York City. How is your online presence? I wasn't taught marketing, but I'm dictating currently on what I like to look at. I'm just trying to treat it like my personal baby and not being a faceless brand. That's fulfilling to me. How is your work culture? Me and my partner shared a studio for two years. He has a brand called Theme. I wasn't feeling as creative as I could be, so I took over this space by myself. It's a tiny space and there are no windows. I lose track of time when I'm in here. I'm still looking for my dream place. My one stretchy top is getting made in Gastown, which is really exciting. Finally partnered with someone to do production, so it's kind of out of my hands, which is 
really, really nice. Nice feeling. I asked a series of interview questions to a second classmate who volunteered. Um, so one of my questions is, who are you? So it's like, it could be a general artist statement about who you are or like, okay, just basic information. Well, I am Lacey O'Neill. I grew up on Bowen Island with a pretty alternative background. I am just about to finish my industrial design degree. And I'm also working as a tattoo artist at the moment. Um, what are your values and goals? It could be in design or in life. My goals are to be successful and do something good with that success. Ideally change the world, but who doesn't want that? It's a big ask. Um, my values are definitely um, sustainability and the planet and mother nature and mother earth. And I would say that another one of my goals is hopefully witnessing humanity do better. What does design mean to you? <laughs> so in professional practice class when we were asked that question and Scott was like, come up with what design means to you. And what design means to me is world building. I think design has a wonderful ability to shape the world around us. I don't think design is always used for good. Um, and I think a lot of design can go horribly wrong or just doesn't have the embodied meaning that it needs to have. Um, so design to me is, yeah, world building, but ideally for the better, not for the worse. Okay, so. What are your inspirations and or do you like mood board for your art and creating? Hmm. For design, I'll say that my favorite designer is Werner Panton. Um, I like things that are um, not necessarily controversial, but I'm not afraid to push buttons. I like design that's very kind of crazy. I like a lot of color. Um, I do make art uh, mood boards in my stuff. I also really like 70s design, 60s and 70s, as well as some of the like civil rights movements that were going on around then. I think people were really close to figuring it out, and then plastic happened, and the 80s happened, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> um, I don't really always, because I also do, like I do design, but I also do art, and I have a really... Um, I have an art practice. For my art, I feel like I'm still working on finding my voice in my art. Whereas design, I feel like, especially with this grad project, I really just kind of gone for it. And I'm like, oh, lol, what do I want? Um, I don't know if I've necessarily done that the same way with art yet. Um, and I also really think that for my art, it's not a matter of finding inspiration or finding mood boards. It's really just trying to channel myself. But I don't think I've mastered that yet. Like, you said you had a tattoo practice, but like, do you have your own practice? Or are you thinking of having your own practice? Um, so I would say throughout my whole life and childhood up until this point, I have had a practice and that is just kind of doing my thing. Um, for the longest time, I thought that I was going to just be an artist. Um, and then I did art really, really intensely in high school. And then I was like, I'm sick of this. I don't want to do this anymore. And then I came to Emily Carr though, because that's really all I've ever known is visual art. And it was at Emily Carr and in the first year when I'd also been feeling that whole time that there wasn't enough that I could do with art. Um, but once I kind of came here and then was like released to what industrial design was, I was like, that's the same kind of doing my thing, but in a way that could have purpose. That being said, I have found a lot of meaning in tattooing because I do think you can do a lot of wonderful things with that, such as like covering nasty scars that people are really ashamed of or just making them feel better about themselves or like there's memorial tattoos for people that have lost people. Um, so I guess my practice is creating and making in whatever sense, but in a way that has meaning. Um, so where is your favorite place to like work in like a desk in your room or like um 
definitely at home. I find that my productive hours are from like 10 till two in the morning. Um, so that's not really possible, like at the school, for example. Excuse me, I also work better alone. Um, like I find it really difficult to work at the school. Obviously I do it, but I hate this place. <laughs> you want me? <laughs> um, and a desk is great, but I used to have, at one point in a bedroom, I had two desks and then drawers. I love to have lots and lots of desk space. I haven't been able to have that same amount of desk space since then, which was probably like, I don't know, like seven years ago. I'm hoping to get that again soon because what I like and when it comes to workspace is um, I can start something and then put it over there on the desk and still have space to work and then be reminded that I have to do it. Um, and I like to have my projects out so that they call to me to work on them. Why Vancouver? Like, are you gonna continue your practice here or are you gonna go somewhere else? Mm, mm, it's interesting. Um, you know, originally when I was choosing universities, I actually thought I was gonna go to NASCAR. That was right out of high school before I decided to take a year off. Um, and I'm really, really glad I chose to go to Emily Carr for a few reasons. Number one being financial reasons. I would have had to be working my ass off while going to school just to afford the plane ticket to go home. So there's logistical reasons, but also, I did a bit of traveling in my uh, gap year, and although it was wonderful to see other cities, I did end up just feeling like Vancouver was awesome. I do really love Vancouver. I think that doesn't mean it's perfect. It's not. We have our problems. But I think something is... I think it's really interesting to see kind of how Vancouver has changed in the last 20 years, because I want to say not that I was alive or conscious 20 years ago, I was a laugh, but um, I, yeah, I feel like 20 years ago, Vancouver was kind of nothing. You know, the main city in Canada was Toronto and yeah, Vancouver was underlooked. I think there's some downsides to Vancouver growing so quickly. Like really at the end of the day, Vancouver is not a city. It is a very, very big neighborhood. But I also think that it has some beauty in that. I think you can make connections here easier than other, other cities. That being said, I've also heard that Vancouver has been voted the loneliest city. And that's because people can't afford to go have fun. But I like the nature. I like that it has a bit more of a small town feel while still being a city and now a major city. Um, and then also finally just growing up on Bowen. Bowen is very much my home and it is very near and dear to my heart. And it's somewhere I, was, I would always like to have a connection to. And it, one thing that's beautiful about it is that you're in the middle of the ocean on a fucking rock, but you're 20 minutes away from you know, a big, a big deal city. So that being said, I'm very happy in Vancouver and I do imagine spending a majority of my life in Vancouver, but I know with my tech two practice, once I finish my apprenticeship in like a year, I would love to be a guest artist in different cities and really see the world. Um, but I just feel, I mean, I shouldn't say this yet. I did love Australia and I would totally move back to Australia or move to Australia, but just, Having a little taste of visiting other cities, this is my home. And I think I will go and do stuff, but when it time, comes time to like, I guess have kids and settle down, when it comes to raising a family, I would like to raise a family here. Toad swirled. Well, this is south facing, so when the sun is out, it's, it's really perfect. But I also work outside, I put- Toad swirled is a collection of hand-sewn ornate dolls. It is featured in a few stores and has an online site mainly run by one person, Diane Jordans. When the weather's nice, because <laughs> when you work by hand, you can, you can basically, nope, oh, that might be somebody from me, just hold on. I asked a series of interview questions. Who are you? I'm Diane Jordans. I grew up in Victoria and I'm self-taught. My family are Polish, tailors and seamstresses. I traveled at 20 to Africa, North Africa, by boat to Southern Pakistan and Hindu Kushma, Iran, Afghanistan, and Turkey. 
and I like opulence and fabrics. What are your values or goals? Connecting people with their inner child. Many customers that buy my creatures are adults. It reminds them of their childhood. They appeal to a wide range to bring joy. What does design mean to you? Many kinds of design, really. To translate a customer's taste into something you reflect in, it needs to pass an acceptable level of quality to see if my eyes like it. What are your inspirations? 60s to 70s childhood, historical designs, opera and ballet. What is your design style? The more ornate, the better. I know where everything is, but everything looks like it's a mess back there. But I, I love the old um, collectible toys. Yeah. Explain the branding and name. Mr. Toad from The Wind and Willows is reckless and adventurous. I was inspired by the story. The logo is Mr. Frog spinning a globe on his finger. It encapsulates the possibilities of life. How did you start your practice? I enjoyed dolls, hats, and opulent fabric. I jumped off the cliff with the things I wanted to do and things unfolded. If you're passionate, people will respond. And I've been doing this full time since 1988. What is your design process? Visualize, build, hand sew, go to the scrapyard for industrial copper wire metal, build skeleton, build human body, pose, add animal head, costuming, then beating the faces. What is your design process? Visualize, build, hand sew, go to the scrapyard for industrial copper wire metal, build skeleton, build human body, Pose, add animal head, costuming, then beating the faces. Why dolls? I really just connect better with animals and storytelling, and the world is so chaotic, so I'm trying not to create a dead product. It's meditative to work with your hands, and I get transported. Pieces. I'm going to be taking these all down to my... They're so cool. Yeah. ...storage area, but... Uh... the frog how do you price usually a person needs an agent artists are declined to ask for big prices i've made dolls for 30 years but i don't want a ceo to only afford the doll most are 150 plus it depends on the scale it could be a therapy doll or for display companies what types of services do you do? I do unique commissions, window dressing, movies, and Disney films, but they aren't all in my individual style. Why Vancouver? I grew up in Victoria, lived in LA, and worked full-time there, and now I live in Vancouver. How is your online presence? I don't post much. I find it desperate and overwhelming. Everyone is trying to sell something. I'm old-fashioned. I haven't updated my website in a while. It is definitely a surprise factor when posting. How is your work culture? Self-employed and self-disciplined. I love to create from 10 a.m. until how long I want to work for. I do several different projects at once, and I don't like to leave things unfinished. I like things to be organized. Oh, really like... 